today I got to teach my students. I really like doing that. I don't want to come see your faces at your sites. I want to do my primary job. Uh, so that's why we're doing this today. Um, I'm going to be discussing the tentative agreement. I'm not going to, going to discuss the what ifs afterwards. I'm just going to talk about what, what we came up with uh, in this document here. Okay? When I'm done, um, I've got about 23 slides. I'll take questions and answers and do my best to answer them. Some I will be able to answer and some I will not. Okay. So, yeah. I'm going to start off by giving a summary of what the agreement is. And everybody's first question is how many furlough days? And so we'll answer that up front. We'll give you the financial aspects. Uh, and uh, Appendix F, the, in the Memorandum of Understanding, that's in our current contract. We've got the, the MOU, and that's where our two furlough days from this year are. That's where our two furlough days from last year are. They're in the MOU. They're not in the contract, but they're in the separate mm -hmm. memorandum. In the, in the tenant agreement that we have, we will have another MOU uh, that will take its place. Okay? Uh, there has been a proposal by the district, and we support for an early retirement incentive, and I'll discuss those details. Then I'll go through article by article the changes that have taken place. Eleven different articles were changed uh, in, the, in the tentative uh, agreement. I'll talk about what's permanent and what's temporary, just to try to make sure people understand that there are differences there. And then I will get into the district finances to show you that we are a district now who's in uh, financial stress, at least in in my opinion. My recommendation and the recommendation of the negotiating team is we think this is the best contract that we can get from the district at this time. We're not thrilled about certain aspects about it. Um, it was a frustrating process, uh, but all that aside, and that's that's part of what we do. We're not expecting it. It's going to be uh, a pleasant experience at the table, but um, you know, we were able to get some of the things that we were looking for. Um, it does have temporary provisions that um, gives financial concessions to the district. Temporary, which means it's not a permanent cut in pay. All right? It's not a permanent reduction in your school year. Um, there are some improvements in working conditions, and there are some that we fought for and were unsuccessful to get. And again, we recommend a ratification. What does that mean? That means that we're today talking to the executive board and the rep council we think that they should recommend uh, approval to the general membership. If those two things happen, then this tentative agreement will go before the members, and there will be uh, a vote on <coughs> April 16th and 17th, which is the Tuesday and Wednesday after we get back from spring break. So you'll have several weeks to look over the, um, the agreement itself and review the video and talk to your friends and figure out which you know, you're going to vote for it or against it. Members of the negotiating team, I'm going to ask them to stand. Uh, Mr. Cusmano is our, uh, he's been with uh, No Cut for a year now, Joe? Yeah, a little over a year. A little, a little bit over a year. So we share him with uh, four other teachers associations uh, here in uh, North Orange County. Bruce Crocker from La Habra. Karen Routine from uh, uh, Buena Park. Myra Dyster from Sunny Hills. Oh, I don't see I don't see John Bowen from Point of Park. Okay. Um, and that's it. Um, as I go through this, if you find that that you know, either you've got a strong opinion and you didn't see something that you'd like to see, or you think that you've got some talents, we're already looking for folks to help us out for our next contract. Okay. Next.
Uh, but sitting across the table from us was uh, uh, their chair was uh, Ed, Ed Atkinson uh, from Human Resources, Mr. Uh, Ron Lebs, who's a new business officer, uh, Dr. Williams, and Dr. Kaufman. Um, we, uh, Mr. Lebs is the newest member on their side. The other three have been on several, uh, several of their teams. The only new member we had on ours was uh, Bruce Crocker. Okay, so the summary, it's a two-year two agreement. It's not one year, it's not three, it's, it's two. It would go into effect uh, at the end of the school year and end June 30th, 2015. Um, there are, we'll talk about some of the good things in there, but then we'll talk about some of the other things. There are three no-tell days. Um, a no-tell day is um, it's a personal day that you take. You get 10 a year. But instead of having to fill out a form saying that you're not taking this day for any of the following reasons, there's not a form to fill out. Okay? So if they ask, you say you're taking a personal day. Currently, we don't. We have zero no-tell days. Um, evaluations. For members who have been in the district for 10 or more years, your last two or more uh, evaluations have been uh, satisfactory, then you are now on a three-year evaluation cycle. Um, there is an early retirement incentive for, um, um, for those with, uh, who are eligible to retire. Um, and we personally think it's a little bit on the low side, but it was the best the district was willing to give. Uh, and I'll, I'll give more details, but if at least 20 members decide to retire, uh, there's a $10,000 um, incentive that they get paid at, on June 30th. Less than 20. There's no guarantee that you'll see any extra funds. Okay, now for the other part. There's a 3.79% cut in total compensation. I have details that I'll describe what that is. Uh, in some cases, it's going to be furlough days. Other cases, it's uh, step and column. So in some cases, it's going to be uh, an increase in class sizes. And uh, class sizes for foreign language teachers go from 38 to 40, and that's a permanent change. <clears throat> we started this process up uh, last fall, we surveyed you. Really, I think the biggest message we got from the members was we don't want to take furlough days to, to pay for somebody else's health and welfare benefits. Okay? Um, we made our proposal in January. We came to the table on the um, 12th of February. We met with them seven times. You turned out in large numbers the day that we sunshined our um, agreement when we formally uh, presented it to the school board that was on January 8th and then last Monday March 18th you again you showed up in, in large numbers um, we were very frustrated at the table and um, while we had made some progress that week um, we had not seen that they were willing to give us some of the things that we were asking for and so we wanted them to remind the school board that there were still issues uh, and uh, I think from your turnout last Monday helped us reach the uh, TA last week. Um, we talk about non-financial issues, um, things like evaluations. It doesn't cost anybody any money. Your principals, your assistant principals, they don't want to evaluate those of you who have been doing this for a long time any more than you want them in your room. Okay. And so you would expect there would be some natural say, sure, we can we can go to three years, maybe even four. That was not the first answer we got at the table. And that on several other issues. And so that was uh, a lot of our angst. So.
Okay, so now the details on the financial part. Um, uh, it's a memorandum of understanding, which means that when the contract, when the terms of the contract expire, the MOU dies. The contract language continues, but the MOU does not. Okay? So there's nothing in your contract right now that says we will always take two furlough days every year. Okay? That part expires on June 30th this year. This next MOU calls for um, some furlough uh, days and some others, but again, that's temporary. It's not a permanent cut. We're not taking a permanent reduction in the salaries. Okay? Um, their initial proposal on February 19th to us was that the district um, needed us to take our, our fair share, 69.1% of the, the cuts they wanted to make, which, which accounted for $4 million for us for each of the next two years, a total of $8 million. Um, we came back to them and said, we don't agree with your numbers. We don't believe your numbers. So they came back two weeks later. Um, amazingly, the number had gone down from $4 million to 2.3. That was a number they came up with. That was what we came up with after they gave us their updated financial, and then we had to convince them to use their, using their formulas and their numbers to come up with $2.3 million. Okay? So it was not a done deal, and we didn't even know until last week that they were even willing to consider that. Um, their initial proposal to us was that we all take a 6.5% cut in pay. That doesn't mean furlough days, that just means your paychecks are lighter. And so. That certainly was not something that we were looking for. Um, <clears throat> the question we always get is, where's the fair share? Where's the me too? Is George going to take a pay cut? Okay, right? Now I'll head, put the hands back to going, yeah, yeah, okay. So we had a lot of discussion on that too because our one of our counters said, you know, we're going to take this cut and management's going to take this cut. Well, um, we're there at the table representing our uh, members of FSTO. We're not there to negotiate for management. We're not there to uh, talk on behalf of CSCA or the confidentials. And I think that's everybody. Is there anybody yeah. like that's it? Okay. So we're just there to talk for us. So I've, I've uh, italicized the words there, uh, but the word anticipate is as close to that we can get that indicates that it's going to be a me too kind of thing. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding. We'll find out once the, the other... Um, associations have their agreements and we'll find out if it's going to be true or not. Uh, so, and um, I'll just point out the uh, number here, $3.35 million. That's how much the district is looking to cut each year from the entire expenses from all of the people that work in the district. So, using that 3.35 that's when we multiply 69.1%. Where are my math teachers? Okay, good. I was, I'm a math major, so got to do some math there. And that's where $2.3 million came from. Okay, it's uh, kind of fair share of, uh, of the pain. This agreement says that your summer is four days longer than what you had thought it was going to be. Okay? So the first day, uh, I noticed the counselor just gave me a side glance. I'm not talking about counselors, sorry guys. You guys have your, uh, you still have your ten half days or five full, full days for your summer counseling. Um, but for everybody else, our first day, the first staff meeting is Monday, August 12th. The first School day is Wednesday, August 14th, and that is an early out day with no meetings that require any FSTO members to attend. Okay. So the principal can't pull you all in and say, okay, we're going to have staff meeting. No. <coughs> contract, contract says no. Okay. So those Monday and Tuesdays, those are the two student furlough days. So that's where the students have the shorter school year. And they did get into discussing about we're depriving the students from testing, et cetera, et cetera. And my reply was the students are getting eight additional days of education this year or next year than they did this year. And the year after, they'll get 10 days. 
So we're not depriving them of much. Okay. Um, the staff days are um, October 18th. That's Columbus Day weekend. So that would be a three-day weekend for you. And then uh, April 18th, which is um, Good Friday for 2014. <coughs> Health and welfare benefits are frozen at this year's expenses by the district. That equated to $9.8 million. Um, we have no idea what the health insurance premiums are going to do for 2014. Um, but for whatever increase, we will have to come together as a group like we did last fall to figure out what, uh, how we handle that. Okay? We did not make any decisions at the table that said PPO or HMO or Kaiser, anybody has to pay a certain amount of money. We will have to determine anything over $9.8 million. Step and column is frozen for nine months. Um, for those of our members who have been at the top of the pay scale, they have not seen a pay raise since 2009. So every furlough day, um, they didn't have the benefit of having a furlough day offset with a chance to move either to the right on the, on the pay schedule or uh, down to the next step. So they've been frozen and Trying to find a way to come up with $2.3 million, we could have done it all in furlough days. Um, but we were looking at other options, and so we decided to freeze step and column. Um, the way that that works is, as a for instance, if you're, if you're at step 8, um, at the start of the school year, you will move to step 9, but you will not see that pay increase until the last paycheck of next school year. And you only get that 10th of the increase. You don't get the whole pay increase, otherwise they don't save any money. Okay? So you do get the chance to step uh, and move columns, but it's uh, you only see the pay, the last paycheck of next year. Okay? Um, next. Okay, for 2014 and 2015. Um, and, and I do have a slide that breaks down and shows you how $2.3 million is saved for each year, and I'll, uh, we'll come to that later. Um, it's one and a half furlough days. All right, how do you take half a furlough day? Well, we're going to get an early out on the first day of school, and that's going to count as your half furlough. Okay? So, um, they have not yet put out a calendar for 2014-15. Um, but the first day will be an early out, and that will be your quote unquote half early. Okay. The other, um, the other furlough day will be Good Friday on April third. <coughs> Health and welfare is again frozen. That means two years from now, they're, they're not paying any extra money towards our health and welfare benefits. All right? Our, our bill is going to probably grow. Next. Uh, step and column is again frozen for nine months. It'll work the same way. Again, if you start this, right now you're at step eight. You go to step nine next year. You see it in that uh, last paycheck, end of next year. All right. Then you go to step 10, but you see that at the end of the following year. So on that second year, you're getting paid at step nine the whole year until the last month, and then, then you go to step 10 okay, as far as pay goes. There is a temporary increase in class sizes. 
I'll emphasize the temporary part. It is not in the that is not in the article that talks about class sizes about these numbers being increased. It is in the memorandum, which means the, the next contract will will discuss whether or not this becomes ever, whether we ever see this anymore. <clears throat> the reason why we went for this was by telling them now that we're willing to take uh, um, an extra kit per class. That allows them to work their staffing so nobody in this room, hopefully, will have to get a paint slip. We asked if it was possible to do, just to find out what the impact would be to have a, a, an extra uh, child next year. And they said, well, you know, first of all, there's not enough time to do that. But it would have meant extra paint slips. And so that was not a serious offer on our part. We just asked the question. So <clears throat> it changes the staffing formula to 28 and a half. 29, um, but the realistic impact is that uh, your maximum class sizes are for the core classes 39, for all other classes 41, and your two semester average goes to 183. Restoration language. Uh, Mr. Lebs and I got into a very long discussion on this last day. It was several, several meetings to figure out. Um, we want the opportunity that if the, the financial picture continues to improve here in the state of California and education continues to get new funds, that we get the opportunity to buy some furlough days back to uh, unfreeze step and column to do whatever uh, whatever we can depending on how much money is uh, brought back and so um, we look um, at the district's finances twice a year uh, we'll look at it this summer whenever the governor signs the state budget um, into law that's supposed to happen June 15th but the legislature and the governor don't always follow their own law so it'll be sometime this summer and then it'll be in March of next year in a, in a date that's called P2. And we will look and um, if there is an increase or decrease in funds by at least $452,000, then we'll come back to the table and figure out how we handle that. We is FSTO and the district. Next, please. All right, so that concludes the, the memorandum of understanding, the big financial one that uh, impacts most people. Here. Early retirement incentive. It's been several years, I want to say 12 or 13, since this district saw one of these. Um, our school board doesn't uh, support something that, if what they see, um, why pay somebody to do something that they're going to do anyway? Okay, so that's why we haven't seen one recently. Well, the one they're offering right now is very light, in my personal opinion. But for those of you who are eligible to retire, this might be an incentive enough to make the either decision to retire early or just reinforce your decision to retire this year. Um, uh, we're going to change this to May 1st, first May May. First, May first. Uh, just because uh, people need some time to make a decision. Um, if you submit your intent to retire to human resources by May 1st. If we get 20 or more FSTO members, there is that's when the incentives kick in. And it depends on how, mu how many people decide to retire. There is no guarantee that if people take us up on this opportunity, that those who were pink slipped will get their jobs back. Okay, They were not able to make that claim. So, Certainly, the more people who retire, it increases the opportunity, but there's no guarantee. 
Um, and um, if you have questions, you need to call uh, Mr. Atkinson and his office at Human Resources. John, Barbara, and I don't know anything about early retirement stuff, and there's too many legalities there. I won't even try to touch that one. Okay? Okay, uh, permanent changes to the contract. If it says an MOU, it's temporary. The, the, the next things I'm going to talk about are permanent changes to the contract. When you read um, the tentative agreement, we don't, this is not the entire contract. This is just the language which has been modified. If you see uh, something with a line through it, that old language that we're saying is being crossed out. You're seeing, if you see language that has an underline, that's new language. And there's not pages and pages of new stuff. A lot of cases, it's a sentence here, a couple words here, maybe a phrase. And that's the nature of, of uh, contracts. Okay, in Article 3, we define uh, what an online education teacher is. That's a relatively new thing for our district. Um, and it will continue to grow. We're trying to... Uh, discuss and solidify what their working conditions are and unfortunately this is as far as we were able to get for that group right now. Hours of employment again added online e education teacher. Um, um, the co-curricular duties um, we are allowing the committee to decide what they want to count for credit. The contract previous Con oh, sorry, the contract currently prohibits anybody from getting credit for a dance or a drama or a musical production. We're taking that prohibition off and letting the co-curricular uh, committees figure out what they want to give credit for. All right, we're not <laughs> mandating it, it's just an option. Okay. Health and welfare benefits are frozen at 9.8. In the past, we've gotten contracts that's allowed as much as a 10% increase. Those days are gone. Okay. Leaves. Uh, the only real change in leaves is the is the no tell personal necessity, and that's in a temporary MOU. That is not a permanent change. Retirement. Um, besides the early retirement, we made we updated a lot of the legal stuff that's in there, uh, just to reflect what you uh, you can no longer retire and then come back and work temporarily. There's a lot of restrictions, and the the contract language was inaccurate, so we updated it. Uh, transfers. Um, probably uh, where most of our frustration was in that um, they really see transfers as a management right. Um, they don't want to give us that, that seniority is the number one thing to determining who gets to be transferred. Um, so uh, with that being said, they, they will be uh, producing a seniority list every year. Um, voluntary transfers will be uh, looked at twice a year now uh, because uh, transfers, there were several that were done at the, at the semester this year and that will continue to be. So you'll have the opportunity by the 15th of November and April 1st to do voluntary transfers. Um, the district will publish their list of, uh, of openings by the May, May 15th and uh, November 1st. Those are, those are uh, new dates. Okay. If you are denied 
the chance to do an, an involuntary, uh, excuse me, if you're denied the chance to do a voluntary transfer, or if you're involuntarily transferred, uh, you uh, will be given a letter within 20 days explaining why. Okay. Uh, the fact that it's within 20 days is the new part. Just trying to get them to, you know, uh, if there's no date, then they're, then they're never late. Um, and as they go to look to fill positions, they understand that volunteers make the most sense. They want to find somebody who wants to get, wants to make that transfer, but we, we we reminded them that they should they should include all members of the department, and not just selected individuals. So that's in there. Um, if you are transferred at any time after the start of the school year, you'll be given two days to get adjusted to your new school without students. Um, class size, as I mentioned, foreign language is uh, removed from the 38 class limit load, which uh, by default puts them in the 40 uh, student size. Special education, mild to moderate, we uh, clarify their class sizes as 38. Uh, the previous language was uh, case was case loads, and that really made no sense at all. And for moderate to severe, plus also to include emotionally disturbed and autism, it says re re uh, regionally designated programs. Those have a maximum case load of 50. Uh, the class size, there was no permanent change to 28.5 in the staff loading. Okay. Uh, jumped down to evaluations. Uh, we were now clarified that our, our president, John Marvin, and, he, and Mr. Atkinson will meet uh, once a year to talk evaluations. That wasn't in there before, just to make sure that there is a, an annual discussion on how evaluations are going. And as I talked about before, uh, if you have 10 or more years in the district with the last two or more uh, satisfactory evaluations, you're on a three-year cycle. Anybody know what the ed code is? Five. You can go up to five. Yeah, so you, again, you would think three, it'd be easy to get. No, they got ten. Um, if you are a hurt employee and you get a does not meet expectations on any of the one, any one of the six areas, you may be evaluated annually. Not have to be, maybe. Okay. Um, and evaluators may change criteria for your evaluation and must notify you. It, it already said that, but now we said within 10 days. So if you have your pre-evaluation conference at the beginning of the year and you, you and the administrator decide you know, you're going to be evaluated on the following <laughs> things, then the evaluator decides, no, I want to change that. They need to let you know in writing within 10 days. And, and if after an observation um, your administrator sees something in that uh, observation which uh, may end up in your uh, written evaluation as a <coughs> negative comment, they have to give it to you in writing within 10 days. So you have the chance, it's not, you, know, you, you have the chance to uh, work on that issue or, or whatnot. Okay. For those of you who are counselors, librarians, speech and language pathologists, uh, nurses, 
Uh, special education case carriers. You don't have a evaluation form. They were supposed to have gotten you a form a long time ago. So we finally, you know, they said yes, we'll finally meet by October 1st. That's still a long time from now, but you know, it shouldn't be this hard. But we're going to get you a form that makes sense instead of using a teacher evaluation form when you're not teaching kids. <laughs> you're not teaching kids, uh, well, you are, but. <laughs> I'm sorry. I used to teach kids. <laughs> And uh, PAR, which is Peer Assistance and Review, um, for those that are on the committee, uh, there used to be an annual stipend. The district is now, uh, we're now going to a, a, an hourly stipend, but it will include all efforts on your part about that committee. So uh, it's not just for the committee time, but if there's any, if you're spending time on uh, any paperwork at home, emails, phone calls, that all counts as well. And our chairman continues to receive $1,500 stipend for that. Next. Uh, professional development, really no changes that, it, that impact you. The, there was a lot of state law changes that we had to make and a small, type, a small typo for stipend. Okay. All right, um, some of you have noticed there's a bunch of MOUs in this tentative agreement. Um, if it's in an MOU, it's temporary, okay, which means it is not a permanent part of the contract. When the contract expires, the terms of the MOU cannot be enforced. Uh, okay, next. Okay, so these are the MOUs that we have in this tentative agreement. This is the part that's temporary. All right, the no-tell uh, personal necessity leave days are temporary. We have three next year, three the following year, but not forever. Right? Those of you who are going to be on the next negotiating team, something to fight for. Okay? Uh, the early retirement incentive right now is just for this year. It is not a permanent thing. Evaluations to get the evaluation form, that is an MOU. Uh, not the evaluation process, but just to have the, have the committee. You know, some things you just got to put in right. And then the MOU that talks about um, Appendix F, which is all of the financial parts, that's, that's temporary. A lot of questions, a lot of rumors. Why are we taking cuts? Um, anybody know how many teachers were rift um, two weeks ago in the county? Fifteen. Fifteen teachers. Okay. All right. Thirteen other credentialed employees. All right. So of those fifteen, how many were from our district? Ten. Ten teachers. There were three others that were that are our members. All right, they're counselors. And they're not in the teacher category. So, you know, of the 28, we had 13 people impacted. And there's lots of districts in our county. So why are we rifting and nobody else is? Okay, good question. Um, <clears throat> there is going to be a cola. 
and I'm not talking about the Coke part, I'm talking about you know, there's a cost of living increase, first that we've seen in several years from the state that will be coming through the district. And there will be one next year as well. So why aren't we getting a pay raise? Good question. Prop 30. I'm hearing other districts are buying back furlough days. Why didn't we buy ours back? Why are we having furlough days next year? I thought Prop 30 solved all that. Okay, so I'm going to try to answer those questions. Next. Oh, and sorry, last one was, what about the reserves? Okay, good question. As, as I mentioned, when the district gave us their initial financial proposal, you know, gloom and doom, um, they're going to foreclose on La Vista, you know, I'm making this one up, but, uh, you, know, uh, um, you know, it's like, you know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, and we need 6.5% uh, back from everybody right now. Okay. Again, um, we have a history of looking at their budgets, at their at their numbers. Um, we have not had the layoffs and the large number of furlough days and the paying for health and welfare benefits the other districts have had over the, over the past several years. That's been nice because of the extra money that our district has had. That money, by large part, is gone now. But again, we did not believe their additional numbers, and two weeks later, magically, they got better. All right. All right. Um, and so again, using their numbers and their uh, their equations, we came up with 3.79. All right, and I do have a slide that kind of shows you where the problem is and um, how dire the problem is. And I'll, but I'm not going to bore you to tears with numbers yet. When we were trying to, to figure out how do you save $2.3 million a year, this is kind of the menu that we had to go by. You know, um, a furlough day. If for us to have a furlough day for our members saves the district a third of the million dollars. $2.3 million would be seven furlough days this year, I'm sorry, seven furlough days next year and seven the following year. That was an option. We could all take, um, if we took a 1% cut in, in pay, that would save the district $661,000. So we um, we could take a 4% cut in pay, and that would solve the problem. Uh, step and column freeze for one year saves the district about a million dollars. If we increase class sizes by half, well, if we increase the student to teacher ratio by half of a student, 28.5 to 29, that saves $872,000, which is the equivalent of seven and a half teaching positions. Okay, you don't save money unless you're paying less, and to pay less means you've got to have fewer <coughs> teachers. Um, if everybody from FSTO who has PPO right now moved to HMO, that would save a million dollars. Okay? So, that's what we looked at when we, as a team, looked and tried to find out what we thought made sense for how our concessions should be. We got together with uh, the exec board and reviewed what the options were. And so this is what we came up with. Four furlough days next year. All right. And once we came up with four furlough days, then we, we literally had to walk and hold their hand and show which days it was going to be. Um, 
they didn't like the idea of starting school late. Um, they, you know, they, it was just one of those things. Um, and so that saves $1.3 million. And then um, if we froze Stepman Column for a full year, we, we thought people would be, wouldn't feel like they would ever see that step or see that adjustment in the column. So if you freeze it for nine months and then they at least see it in their last paycheck, they know that they made some progress and they get to keep it for the next year. So uh, with that, that's what the first year's impacts are, uh, $2.26 million is what we saved by that. Now, health and welfare, frozen at $9.8 million. For us to have um, increased health and welfare costs by 5%, that would have cost us another half a million dollars. That would have been another one to two furlough days. And again, from our, the surveys that, that you answered us last fall, you said you didn't want to take furlough days for health and welfare benefits. So we did not, you know, we were looking at a chance to kind of buy uh, any kind of bump for health and welfare and it would have meant uh, furlough days, and we decided not to offer that. For the second year, um, it's one and a half furlough days. That saves half a million dollars. Uh, if you increase the staffing ratio by half a student, that's $870,000. And a nine-month freeze in step and column is just under $1 million. And so, you, again, you come up with $2.3 million. So the district is satisfied that this is, uh, meets what they're looking for from a financial concession from FSTO. Now the next couple slides I'm going to show you what the finances are and what they're projected to be. Um, the district started this year with $22 million in the bank. When I say in the bank, that's in their general fund. That does not include Fund 17, which is a special reserve fund that uh, originally was funded from the sale, sale of Lowell High School. It does not include Fund 20, which is a special reserve fund to, for um, health and welfare benefits for retirees. But in their general checking account, $22 million, they are deficit spending to the tune of about $7.5 million. And they have been for a couple years. Um, we're receiving 20% less per student than we did in 2008, but we're doing the same job. We've gotten from 2008 to here without big cuts because we had things like the Federal Education Jobs Bill and some of the other federal monies that have come in as kind of one-time band-aids, but those band-aids aren't available right now. The $7.5 million deficit includes the fact that we're taking two furlough days, and so it would really be about $8.1 million that they'd be in the hole. Okay, so we, we have helped them a little bit over the past two years. So they're going to end the year with about $16 million in the bank. Um, they're required to have about $9.5 million. Okay, so they're okay for right now. Notice the number at the top starts to shrink. We've gone from 22 to 15. The same problems financially. Um, and if and this does not include any of the money that we're giving back right now. This assumes that um, we don't take any furlough days or any cuts or anything. All right, they end the year with $9 million, all right, which is below what they're supposed to have, but they still have money in the bank. Next one. Uh, 
and it pretty much uh, they're they're broke by the end of the third year. Uh, 2000, uh, let's see, June 30th, uh, 2015, they're down to nothing. Okay, um, and they're not allowed to be down to nothing. So that's why we're making the concessions that we are. Next. Um, with our concessions, they will just have enough $9.7 million in the bank to meet their obligations. They are not going to be flush. However, reserve funds 17 and 20 still are going to have roughly the same amounts in them. We attempted to get them to, uh, we negotiated for those funds and were extremely unsuccessful. With them. And so. Um, <coughs> One of the phrases that I heard at the first time, had heard at the table for the very first time, is those funds are being used for cash flow. And I was very skeptical about that remark, um, and I asked for some some details. They've already borrowed four million dollars this year from Fund 17 internally because of cash flow issues. Um, it's a little shell game. The state plays. They, they're supposed to pay you six thousand dollars per student but you don't see it all until the school year is already over, and yet you have bills to pay, and so all districts are having cash flow issues. They, they expect to have, uh, have to probably borrow another five or six million before the year is out for Fund 17. So they are using it for cash flow, and in their reports that they submitted to the county, they are showing a negative balance in their general fund just due to cash flow issues. So, and with that, I conclude my presentation.